Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Welcome, my friends, to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And I'm Phil Thompson. Welcome again to uh, another week of our podcast. And uh, we're so glad that, that you are here. We are with a tech company called JSL Solutions. And what do we do, Steve? We provide three primary products, streamingchurch.tv that provides live streaming for churches, Church App Live, which provides a mobile app, and myflock.com, which provides both uh, a um, church management system and a website management system, content management system. And uh, we're always available to, uh, we, we work in leadership with our churches, and uh, both of us have been doing that for a long, long time. We won't wear you out if you've listened to this podcast before about telling you how, how many decades and decades of experience we have. Uh, but I've been involved in pastoral work for many years, as well as broadcasting. And Steve has been involved uh, in uh, church leadership teams, boards, and and, and doing a bunch of stuff. So we, we do a lot of hands-on stuff. Uh, and and so we're always available to help. And so a lot of times these podcasts will involve not just tech-related things, but they'll involve uh, leadership stuff, working with volunteers, anything we can do to help enable your church, you as a volunteer or a pastor, to help you get your ministry to the next level. All right. So, so what are we talking about today? Well, we'd like to talk about ways to improve your church website. I think this is always good to, to, to look at once in a while because our websites, uh, they can get dated. We may not always look at them very much ourselves uh, or we just get used to certain things. Yeah. And so I think it'd be good to, to so talk got, a little bit about that. You've written some notes here. you got 10 ways. So you got 10 ways to improve your church website. And, and this is something I just thought about this here as we open up the microphones here, Steve. One of the things that uh, you might want to consider right off the bat when it comes to improving your website is using uh, a company called User Testing dot com or peak user testing dot com. I don't have the notes in it, so I'm rambling on here. Do you, yeah. you know what I'm getting? Oh, at? yeah. Tell, tell us what that is. So we actually we started using that as well. User testing dot com is a, a company out there that will take a random individual off the Internet to review your website. And so they uh, will go to your site and talk through what they see, what what sticks out to them, what they'll they don't video, like. They'll do like a video right. screenshot. Yeah, you get a video computer. screenshot of them interacting on your website and you'll see um, you know what's you know what sticks out to them. So it's just it's a way to um, you know it's if you can remove yourself from something Unbiased. and get a you get a really a, a new perspective that you may not be able to see. So if you're involved with building your website and you know it really well, uh, getting somebody brand new to be exposed to, it's a useful thing. So they have a, they, they have a paid tool as well as, uh, the, the free, free tool. Yeah. Peak, peak user testing, I think is what is, it's called. Yeah. It will allow you to once a month, I believe, uh, submit your URL and they'll get a random person to take a, usually, um, about five minutes. Five minute right. video of them navigating and or fumbling through your right. church site. And you can also if you uh, for a for a small fee you can say you can set up a a goal for the person. You can say, I want you to be able to find out when the children's classes meet and and, you, and just right. set them to your website and watch and see how they get to what you want them to do. Right. For the, so for the, so the domain is user and uh, user testing.com. Excuse me. That was my stomach there. Uh, <laughs> not really. That was my phone ringing. Uh, user testing.com is the domain name and that you can use that for paid purposes. And, and as you were just saying, you can give them specific instructions on, what to look for, what to navigate for, and they will give you very honest answers as they're navigating. They'll do a screenshot, and you can kind of watch them. Uh, and, and in our case, what we do, we have you know streamingchurch.tv and churchapplive.com, and then we have myflock.com. So we will turn them loose on those kind of things, and it's extremely frustrating for us because. 
our websites are targeted for specific people. So, you know, somebody's going to go to like streamingchurch.tv and they're not interested in streaming, but you're asking them to go and look at it. It's kind of funny because they're like, okay, what is this site? I don't know what this is. Do I have to buy this to watch my stream, my church stream? And, and yeah. you know what I mean? So but they'll figure out a church site. Yeah. But if, so. if you go to have them go to your church site or your business site, you know, they, they'll catch on. So, so that's they a They should catch on pretty quickly. Hopefully. If they don't, then you then have you have problems with their site. Yeah, you've got problems. So usertesting.com, but there's, there is the free version that's peak. I think it's peak P E E K user. Just Google it and you can do it for free. Now you can't give them specific instructions, but they'll spend about five minutes. So it's eye opening. And the reason we're bringing this up is because your church website is very important. In fact, there's some stats here in 2012, 46% of church attenders said that a church's website was very important uh, in picking a church to visit. Now that was three years ago. So it's probably gone up. It's and then probably gone up. Yeah. The other stat here is 33% said that the internet was the first place where they learned about their church. And I bet you that's higher now. Right. And then the last one is 23% found their church via a search engine. And again, I think it's much higher. So your church website, your ministry website is really very important. And so it's really good for you to to have different people look at it. But we're going to tell you some ways here that hopefully will help improve your website. Mm -hmm. So let's just so begin. number one on the list. So well, before we get into this, um, some of these things are going to apply to, as you mentioned, um, I've been been doing this since two thousand one, and if you think back, two thousand one, what ninety. 8% of everybody was on dial-up connections. Right. And websites were much different then. So one of the, the rules of thumb that we had with the um, with your church website was that it needed to load fast, and that's still true today. But back then, uh, you couldn't do things like have a large image on your site and have right. your 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 site load quickly. Yeah. So the game has changed um, since then. Our average internet bandwidth speeds have dramatically increased. So that's changed the game for the website yeah. rules. So we've had to adjust over the years. Uh, so our rules. Uh, so anyway, yeah. so the first one ties into that, you know, back in the dialogue days, having a video, uh, putting a, a welcome video suicide it would have been, yeah, yeah it just wouldn't work because it'd take forever to load. Right. And it would be just a, a not a good experience. But today, a welcome video embedded on your site is a very easy, yeah. uh, inviting thing to do. Yeah. So we're talking about first impressions here for your websites. And, and a video, uh, if it's done well, can make a very, very good first impression. And so one of the things you might want to keep in mind if you're going to do a welcome video, or if you have one already, you might want to consider this. Make sure that you keep the video short. Mm -hmm. I mean, really one minute, maybe two minutes. At the most, I wouldn't go too long. And you want to let people know what to expect, uh, you know, the information they need, uh, you know, maybe answer a question uh, and, or two very quickly. And as you do this video, one of the things that mistakes that a lot of churches make is they load the video and start it playing automatically when you get to the oh, site. Yes, uh, and with audio and and you want to avoid that. You want to allow you want to have a have it be prominent as a video, but have the user elect to um, play the video. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So don't, pl please, please, please don't have it automatically load and play when you're, when somebody gets to the site. Yeah. That Not goes for thing. music as well. Yeah. Eh, yes. <laughs> All right. So welcome video is a good thing to have. The other thing is you should probably have something that's very clearly evident on your homepage that says, I'm new, you know, what to expect if I'm new or yeah, I'm a first time uh, guest, yeah, first like time here, what to expect that, that kind of a thing. And so uh, maybe start here would be a good link or something they have there that a page. And so that, that would be really good. Uh, that gives people a good place to start and gives them, you know, the, the information they may need. Yeah. It lets them allow very quickly to get to the point where they can decide whether it's a good fit for them as well. Okay. Yeah. So, or, 
you know, if they plan on visiting and you say I'm new, then it's going to have things like directions to the church, what to expect when I get there, what do I wear, right. you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now here's one that uh, you and I uh, may disagree on a little bit. The third one is a really good domain name or a better domain name. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would agree to, to – here the point I I think is good is that I think you need to try – to come up with something that's catchy, not very long, and something that's not real complicated. Right. Uh, uh, the problem we run into with a lot of churches is they already have a domain name. So if the church has been around for a while, they've got a domain name and everybody knows it. Right. Sometimes it's, and they got a lot invested, so it may be challenging to get a change. But, you know, we're dealing with churches that are... Um, going through a rebirth, they're right. relocating, they're wanting to change the name of the church or something like that, then that's a great opportunity to yeah. create a, a domain name that, I mean, these rules applied from the beginning and they still apply, is you want it as short as possible, as easy to spell and understand the <laughs> spoken version of, right. um, so that so that it's obvious. Um, yeah. So... And, you know, sometimes you got to be a little bit creative, but, um, I mean, it can be done. Yeah. We just went through um, one of the – Our local. A local church, yeah, yeah uh-huh. that was yeah. going through this process, and they said, we like this, and we threw out four more options, and mm-hmm. they actually right. went with one of our options that yeah. we had recommended. So what do you think, Steve, about, you know, like the URL, the, the suffix, I guess is what you call it at the end. I mean, you know, the very, very, still very common one is .com. Yeah. So uh, but then, the, you know, a lot of churches have it's picked the, up the .org. It's the top level domain is actually what it's called, the TLD. Okay. So .com, .net, .org. Okay. I mean, we have our, one of our companies is streamingchurch.tv, although if you did search streamingchurch.com, we also have that domain. Yeah. But .tv... Uh, so what do you think about, I mean, should they try to stick to a .com? And now I believe there's other domains such as .church. Yeah, .church has become available. I haven't heard of many churches using it. You may, if you've, got a, if you've got a domain that you already like and you're mm-hmm. using either a .org or a .com or a .net, um, yeah, you might as well go and see if you can yeah. get the, the .church version of that as well. Some of them were a little more expensive. Like I remember years ago, you were telling me to register a .tv is more expensive oh, it is. than a .com. Yeah, there are the .tvs are more expensive. Um, okay. There are some that are quite a bit more expensive than others okay. uh, as far as the top-level domain right. goes. But um, keep it short. Keep it. Easy to communicate verbally. Right. right. And, um, yeah. That's... I, I have a church I'm working with. And I, I, I won't say who they are, but I understand why they pick their domain name, but it just doesn't translate well for a domain name. And, and, and it's just, it just, it's just frustrating for me. And I, I understand why they picked it, but it just, it's very confusing and it, it just doesn't work out. And, and so, uh, yeah, so really put some thought and effort into that. And, and how could they find, if they were trying to find, uh, let's say you've got a domain name in, in, in mind, how can you find out if it's taken or not? Uh, well, you're going to want to go to one of the registrars or, and use their, it's called who is, or if you go to who is.org, okay. it's H w h o i s dot org okay. it's actually an old right. unix function okay. who is dot org and you type in the name because a lot of people go oh i've typed it into my browser and nothing came up mm-hmm. that does not mean that the domain is available see it, the domain may be registered and being held hostage by somebody and right. and the the website not used so okay. yeah all right, good. All so right. coming up with a good domain name is is very important. Yeah, it's, it really is. All right, so as we talk about how to improve your website here, let's move on to the fourth one, and that has to do with images on your website. Yeah, so creating beautiful pictures, very pleasing um, artwork. Now there's uh, lots of um, photo sites that sell stock imagery, mm-hmm. and so you, you, you're going to want to get 
you know, the, the best looking stock imagery as you can. And that's a, a current trend here is to have your website, either the complete background or the a major part of it covered in a beautiful picture or, a, you know, a, a moving video that's silented out, that sort of thing. Okay. So, um, which was something you couldn't put t together a few years ago because the page would load too slowly, but now you have the option. So beautiful images are really important, great stock photography. One of the reviews we had on one of our sites from through the uh, usertesting.com was we didn't have a friendly face on our site, and so they didn't like our site. Okay. So Was that one of our sites? That was, was one of our okay. sites. Right. Yeah, we'll it's kind of interesting because the, uh, the screen had, we had a slider on the site, and it went right to a screen full of... Uh, a choir singing, and yeah. as she was mentioning, there are no faces on here. Well, and, and the other thing, too, another alternative to, instead of getting stock photos, you could, if you had somebody that was really a good photographer, a professional photographer, or, or maybe even hire somebody, you could have somebody come in and take pictures of real people uh -huh. in your church and real right. stuff. And, and and because I have heard some feedback from people saying, well, you know, the site looks great, but, you know, who are these people? You know, it looks like a TV commercial, you know, because you've got everybody from every different ethnic, every whatever. Right. And, and, and you can just kind of tell this is fake. So that's another thing to maybe keep in mind is. Right. Is if you wanted to, you could hire somebody who can really take, I mean, good pictures, not. You know, not me right. or somebody, you know, just and you would score away. well in the authenticity yeah. category. So it's something to think about. So good pictures, you know, obviously, we're, you know, again, we're talking about first impressions, you know, and, and whether you like it or not, first impressions are important. Uh, so because we're talking about mainly newer people here trying to find your church. All right. So, uh, again, see your church website as an investment or your ministry website as an investment. If you're in business, you would probably invest you know, some money into your, oh, yeah. your business website. Hopefully you would, and you, you kind of need to do that for your, your ministry, your churches. All right. So the fifth thing to do that would improve your church website is accept giving, accept online donations, online donations. And so more and more today, and I'm one of these people, I don't carry a checkbook with me anymore. I carry very little cash, very little cash. Uh, I pretty much use my debit card. And that's what I use most of the time. I have some other credit cards or whatever. If I'm, you know, taking you out to lunch, I'll use the company card. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the bottom line is, most people today, uh, you know, especially the younger generation, they're they're doing online stuff, online giving. Hi. So you should make it extremely easy for people to give online. We we did this at the church I'm working with. Actually, we use one of our mobile apps, churchapplive.com. We use the churchapplive.com mobile app, and we made it very clear where people could give online through the app, and our donations have gone up hmm. uh, because of that. Yeah. Online giving, very important. Oh, yeah. I was I got to search high and low for the checkbook on our house now, yeah. and... Whereas a decade or so ago, there was, you'd be writing checks all the time. And now it's like, oh, we wrote one check this month. Yeah, we rarely do it now. So uh, probably a lot of people are going to ask us here, well, what company can I use? Is How do we do this kind of a thing? Uh, a lot of churches are using PayPal, uh -huh. paypal.com. And, and I don't have any problem with PayPal. I use it all the time for my personal use. Yeah, and they've got a uh, donation thing set up. There's, plus there's, Lots of companies out there that focus on just um, the yeah. Christian community. Um, There's a bunch of them now. Right. Uh, I don't know. You know, we can't really recommend any, uh, but yeah, they're going to take a piece. They're going to take a little piece of the pie. Uh, 2%. Yeah. What's PayPal take? 3%? Uh, it's probably 2.7. 2.7. So they're going to, yeah, for the donations online is... There's a couple options there. There's EFTs. If you go through a company that does EFTs, electronic e funds transfer. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. Then um, the the fees are very low there okay. for that. But if you're getting processing a credit card or a debit card online, then there's going to be a fee of three percent. I've had board members say, "Oh, we could, we're going to lose two percent or three percent on this." I'm like, "Yeah, but." It's worth it, in my opinion, in the long run, because you will get more people giving. 
So yeah, yes, you're going to have to pay for it. That's why businesses accept credit cards when they run their business. Exactly. <laughs> they pay the fees and they get more business because they accept. Because it's, it's just it's convenient. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. So uh, something to keep in mind that, that you should have on your website. And again, when we're talking about these things, uh, some of these things like the giving, I think, should be easily accessible. I think it people shouldn't have to search really hard right. to find it. Uh, all right. So let's move on here for the sake of time. Uh, websites today, you know, because people are searching online, SEO is pretty important. So yes. Explain it. What SEO is? So Steve. Search engine optimization. All right. So you you want to be found on Google. So Google's kind of the the main game in town. True. I don't know what the stats are. Eighty something percent now of all searches. Maybe even higher than that. Um, it wasn't always that way. Um, so you need to rank well on Google. And we get this question all the time. It says, "Well, I want to show up on the first page of Google." My my uh, church name is you know, New Life Chicago or New Life Church in Chicago, and I want to be the front page of uh, everywhere in Google. So you that may be challenging, but um, there are things you can do to your website to enhance your SEO. Now, Google has some tools that will allow you to evaluate the site. Um, there are people that claim they've figured out how to outsmart Google and get on the front page. Those guys come and go typically. Yeah. Um, and if you put all your eggs in their basket, that means you will come and go. Yeah, you will come and go <laughs> as well. Um, part of the, and there's tricks and there's people that claim there's tricks. It kind of gets under my skin when I start hearing people talk about this sort of thing that, oh, you can do this if you only you know, put your stuff on Google Plus and put this tag on here, then you're going to shoot to the front page. And Google works really hard to get the most relevant results. So if you put together a website that would be relevant for what people are looking for, then um, you're not going to have, you're going to, you're going to do well with Google and be on the, yeah. you know, you're going to, you're going to do well and rank well with Google. Original content uh, is, is important, I think, for Google. And uh, I think that, uh, again, like you said, uh, and keeping things up to date. The, the other thing, too, is, is what I have found, and I don't have it in my notes here, but blogging is, is important as well. And we can talk about that at another time. But if, if you well, can... Yeah, like, a little topic on yeah. how to optimize your site. There's lots of things you can do. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, again, SEO is important. Uh, again, Google, we still point people to Google for those things, and uh, they can certainly help you. There's lots of uh, material that Google will provide you, and you will have to spend some time digging through it. But right. uh, you, you can, it's worth it if you can work at it a little bit. All right, so moving on here from, uh, from this is hosting. Uh, and this is kind of uh, what you were alluding to earlier, Steve, about loading the pages. Today we have, you know, there's cable, there's... Uh, even some places fiber optics is coming in now, but, but uh, your website needs to load pretty quick. Right. Uh, you, if you have a website that loads really slowly and it yeah. doesn't seem to be coming up and that's going to hurt you. And so you want to really make sure that you have, uh, you have somebody that's hosting your website. That's, that's a solid host. It's got a robust <laughs> server now. Right. Most of the time, if you have a really slow site, that's going to be it's, it's your fault because you got stuff on your site that that yeah. takes a long time to load. But right. other times, it's you're you're dealing with a web host that is completely saturated and none of their stuff loads very quickly. Yeah. So uh, there's a, there's some there's actually some things you can have some fun with. You can test to see how fast your site loads. One of the things you, one of the places you go, I think, Steve, is what is it? Which loads faster? Yeah, which loads com? faster is a site that'll allow you to, especially okay. if you've got um, a couple options, you can, it basically, you can load two pages next side by side and it will do a little oh. speed test on how they load and which one loads quicker and that sort of thing. So what's the name of the place again to go? Which load? I think it's whichloadsfaster.com. I should okay. double check that. But uh, Somebody's got something too, I think, that's recommended. Pingdom website speed test. 
P I N G D O M Pingdom like, website like speed Kingdom testing. with a Pingdom. Yeah, I guess I don't know, but yeah, but check that out. And if your if your site's lo- loading low, you need to check. You need to find out if it's loading slow. You need to to find out is there just too much junk on my website? You know, am I got something that's it's that? But it, it needs to load pretty quickly. Yeah. And there's a balance. I mean, we talked about making sure you have beautiful images. Those are going to take up, you know, some speed. So you're going to want to make sure you optimize your images. Right. So. Um, all right, so so let's skip through a, f- a couple of things that we're running out of time. Uh, we've talked about this a few weeks ago, and that's doing a church podcast. And uh, we talked a little bit about why it's important, why you should really consider doing a church podcast. Uh, and if you're going to, ha- if you if you're one of the people listening out here, and you're you do record your services, uh, the audio part, uh, then and you're happy with that, and you're doing a pretty good job at it, where it sounds pretty good, uh, then by all means make that link available where on your homepage somewhere where it's easily easily accessible right i mean why do a podcast if nobody can find it right now it's true you may have it up on itunes and you have people subscribing to it and that's good you should do that but you know if somebody's new and looking at your church uh they're going to want to get a sample of, of what the church is like and the website as we just said earlier with pictures and things on there welcome video is good but a podcast link would be good as well so yeah. if you've got it's it one it of up. the I mean, we had found that um it's it's one of the best ways to experience what a service is like mm-hmm. you can hear the pastor teaching you can kind of get a feel for you know whether i want to check this church out it's one of the most right. common yeah. things that are seriously considering a church they're going to listen to yeah. your teachings and, and then the next step along that lines would be streaming video of course that's what we do for a living and so if you do streaming video either with us or another company uh one of the things that kind of in my pet peeve is uh and it obviously sometimes this has to do with honestly some of our customers uh you know i'll they may be having a question about their streaming streaming video so i will go to the website and try to pull it up and watch it I can't find it. <laughs> that <laughs> they're, is true. They're using us, but I can't find where to click to the streaming video, where to click to the to the live service. So if you're going to do streaming video and then put it out there where people can easily find it. Right. Most churches do a really good job with it, but you're right. We've had a few that say, oh, we've got this. It's buried it's on somewhere. page nine somewhere. Yeah, it's hidden somewhere. Where can we find this? I don't know. Good luck. But, uh, you know, so... Uh, streaming video is good. I mean, and we've talked about this before, Steve, how uh, streaming video can really be a great tool to reach new people, uh, not only people that are shut-ins or people that can't make it to your service, but new people are looking all the time for a church. And uh, if you can do some streaming video and have it out there for people, it gives them a good idea what the what the pastor's like, what oh, the yeah. service is like, what the music's like. And with our platform, what the other people are like that are viewing online or the people that are hosting. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we're out of time here, but uh, hopefully some of these tips we have provided uh, will help you improve your church's website. If you have a question about that or you want to add to that, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Support at streamingchurch.tv and check our podcast out, Church Solutions Podcast on iTunes. Uh, Review us, recommend us, don't recommend us. Give us a poor review, whatever. We just would like to hear from you. And and uh, we're also available on newmediaministries.tv. And we also have a YouTube channel, which uh, we're pulling stuff off of my old channel, which was under Phil Thompson Live, to now streamingchurch.tv. That's our YouTube channel. So, you know, check us out. Give us some feedback. So we're out of time, Steve. Thanks for your uh, information on this stuff. Very helpful. Glad to be here. All right. Well, we're glad that you watch and listen to us, I should say. And uh, we will catch you next time on an- another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. For Steve, I'm Phil, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great day.